the United States has always designed the most outstanding and deadliest aircrafts. Still, to an extent, the engineers have exceeded the limitation of the wildest expectations. They have designed an impenetrable tank with wings instead of an attack aircraft. Today's video will discuss the A-10 Thunderbolt II, celebrating 50 years in the sky. Already, we have learned that it has taken a brief part in the wars and battles with all its modifications. Welcome to Military Knowledge. Make sure you follow this video to the end to get all the information. Authorities named the A-10 Thunderbolt II after the World War II fighter bomber P-47 Thunderbolt. The Warthog's long history began in the jungles of Vietnam, which proved to be a difficult obstacle for the existing fleet of Republican Aviation's costly F-105 Thunder Chief and McDonnell Douglas's 14 Phantoms. The pilot affectionately called the brainchild of the Fairchild Republic a Warthog because of the specific type of nose it had, reminiscent to that of an African boar. In photos, it's often seen with a pattern of razor-sharp teeth. Back then, the main strength force for the United States was the A-1 Sky Raider from the Douglas during the Korean War. A good solution is a powerful, specialized, supportive aircraft with a decent payload and the ability to stay in the air. At the same time, however, its propeller design was too slow and vulnerable to enemy ground fire. The aircraft's hour was also poor, resulting in losses of over 267's A-1s during the Vietnam War. Now more than ever, America needs a hearty specialized attack aircraft capable of withstanding shots from even anti-tank guns. Therefore, in 1961, the US authorities were represented by Secretary of Defense Mr. Robert McNamara, who ordered the US Air Force to develop two tactical aircraft. One of them was to take on the role of a long-range strike force in an interceptor, and the second would take the role of a fighter bomber. And that is how the F-111 Aardvark appeared from General Dynamics. It's a single-seat powered attack aircraft with two powerful engines. An engine can destroy tanks, armored vehicles, and other ground targets. Of course, the Warthog is not as elegant and graceful as the McDonnell Douglas F-15 Eagle and the F-16 Fighting Falcon. Technically, it would be challenging and costly as this is one of the many armaments of the aircraft. Of course, on 11 different hardpoints, 3 under the fuselage and 8 under the wings, the Warthog can carry up to 7.93 tons of various weapons. These do include the AGM-65A and the AGM-65B Maverick. However, this Warthog beast has other spectacular virtues necessary to perform its tasks. The attack aircraft is assembled around its primary weapon, a 30mm automatic rotating Gatling-style 7-barrel GAU-8 Avenger. This is one of the most powerful aircraft guns of this caliber. First off, the beast weighs almost 2 American tons. Secondly, its rate of fire is 3,900 rounds per minute, which means that the Avenger can penetrate armored vehicles at a distance of 1,312 yards with 65 rounds per second. Right, let's take a little bit of a breather to remind you to take a moment to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit that bell icon for regular updates. Also, feel free to like and share. The accuracy of their hits before the barrels overheat is about 80%. Reloading this weapon is an incredible sight, as is the characteristic sound of the Avenger known for its power. Replacing such a gun would mean depriving the aircraft of its ability and its charisma. The high-precision anti-tank missiles were launched with a range of up to 17.4 miles and homing characteristics based on the Fire and Forget principle rockets. This subsonic attack aircraft distinguishes itself by its effectiveness, becoming a hero on par with the F-15 fighter and the F-117 stealth strike aircraft. 144 combat vehicles were involved in Operation Desert Storm. This legendary attack aircraft is as simple to maintain as one could help and does not require anything special from the runways. So why are the military pilots partial to the A-10, and why exactly is it so famous? Many military experts and other international observers watched the events in the Persian Gulf in 1991. More than a thousand Iraqi tanks, about 2,000 other armored vehicles of 1,200 artillery, and two helicopters were disabled simultaneously. Only seven vehicles were shot down, and about 15 got damaged. It was then that the Warthog showed its vitality. 
For instance, one of the Thunderbolts received severe damage to the wing, but could return to the base even with such an injury. This high maneuverability, good visibility from the cockpit, and low flight speed allowed the A-10 to hit even the small targets on its first run. According to the ground technician, any other aircraft would not have made it. Did you know that 6910 were also involved in the operation in Iraqi Freedom, which took place from March to April of 2003? A civilian version of the A-10 was allocated to replace the North American T-28 Trojan working on weather research. The military avionics and oxygen system will be changed in this version. On ground attack missions, the debut came in combat during the 1991 Gulf War. It destroyed almost 1,000 Iraqi tanks, 2,000 military equipment, and 200 artillery pieces. The Joint Fleet Initiative A-10 led to improvements, such as a new wing design. Data links the ability to use the JDAM, or Joint Direct Attack Munition Intelligent Weapons, with the WCMD system. The stubborn Warthog proved its incredible vitality in air battles over Baghdad. One aircraft was seriously damaged, a hydraulic system failure damaged one engine, and hundreds of holes in the fuselage wing and the plumage of the vehicle. Yet, the plane still reached the airfield in southern Iraq. By the way, it was piloted by Colonel Kim Nicole Reed Campbell, who was actually awarded for this maneuver. Speaking of the survivability, one should know the possibility of returning the Warthog to base on one engine with half the tail on the rudder and half of the wing. In addition, an auxiliary power unit provides power when the engines are not even running, and the ground power sources are not connected. Furthermore, parts of these systems in the cockpit are protected from the guns up to 23mm. All the controls within the aircraft have three redundant reserves, two hydraulic and one manual on the rods. There are also two 115-200V three-phase alternators, and an emergency source is a 34AH battery with a 24V output voltage. The separate engine cells are also protected against fire from the ground. At one point, the decision was made to replace the temperature turbofan bypass engines. TF-34 GE-100F was developed by General Electric with modern power engines with similar thrust, but are characterized by significantly lower fuel consumption weight and longer duration. Sometimes I just wonder if the awkwardly protruding chassis will be replaced as well. This may be a necessary, albeit pragmatic approach with the possibility of landing the attack aircraft on its belly. There's also been some work on the structural fatigue by replacing the airframe elements. Most recently, 109 Thunderbolt received new wings designed for 10,000 flight hours. The attack aircraft has also gone from its analog routes to the modern digital battlefield. The first step was the A-10C Precision Engagement Program with the HOTAS or H-O-T-A-S. It's commendable to the throttle and the stick system. Already known to modern fighters with its implementation, the pilot can control the aircraft without removing his hands from the control lever. Some other novelties featured on the Warthog will be the multifunctional screens and displays on the helmets and the new optoelectronic containers or radar. The multifunctional display from the F-16 may migrate over to the attack aircraft, completed with two displays and added to the precision display engagement package. The aircraft will receive a Link-16 connection, providing a much broader and more efficient data exchange to date. Using helmets with integrated Bales Vision X Scorpion display systems has already begun. And no other aircraft gets into the thick of a firefight more often than the Warthog. Overall, the A-10 is the pinnacle of the Fairchild Republic's functional approach. Stay tuned to our Military Knowledge Channel for more regular, exciting updates. We'll see you in the next upcoming video.